Oprah Winfrey once said, the only thing that is certain in life is that it will change. Sorry. <clears throat> I hate this quote. I have always hated this quote. I grew up wishing that Peter Pan was real so that he would take me to Neverland and nothing would ever have to change. Every year I would plead with my parents to let me stay in the grade that I was in because it was familiar. Alas, my parents never let me. Peter never came. And my fear of change and the uncertainty that it brings with it grew as I grew. And yet, simultaneously, I was always seeking change in the form of challenge, adventure, and growth. I was that kid that no matter what grade or ski result you gave me, I wanted the next one to be better. You gave me 100%, I was dead set on getting the bonus question next time. This began the great dichotomy of my life, and I suspect many of yours. My simultaneous fear of change, coupled with my need for it to supply challenge and growth. Then, on August 6, 2007, a car crash took the fear-growth dichotomy, magnified it out of all proportion, clarified the extremes, and polarized my emotions. On a beautiful, sunny summer's day, my mother, grandmother, grandfather, and I headed to my great aunt's wedding anniversary when a car crossed the median and landed on ours. I alone survived. Barely. My body was shattered. My entire world was shattered. I was terrified. I had lost any false certainty that I was safe, and my fear of change was magnified as suddenly I knew how horrible change can be, that at any second, the very foundation of life itself can crumble. And it scared me. It terrified me. And yet, there is something in losing almost everything. It strips you to the bare essence of who you are. I don't want to call it pure liberation because I was also so afraid. But it did strip me of the superficial fears, the am I smart enough, popular enough, am I going to get a great job, because they simply did not matter in comparison to what I was facing. I was only my core. And just as the fear had been clarified, so too was my essence. I found that when stripped of everything, what remained was a soul of love and of peace. And I knew then, with more clarity than I ever had before, that that is how I want to live my life that I want to strip away the superficial fears and ridiculousnesses of everyday life and live as much as possible from that place of love and of peace. The accident had made me face two of my greatest childhood fears at once, that I would lose my mother and that I would be paralyzed. The simultaneous realization of those fears was at times overwhelming. It felt as though my very soul was ripping apart. I did not know how I would ever be fully happy again, how I would ever let new love in. And yet, I didn't let my fear of paralysis paralyze my life nor did I let the loss of my mother's love keep me from loving again. But the all-important and most difficult question remains, how? How, in the face of two seemingly equally strong extremities, do I almost always come out seeking to live and grow from a place of love and peace instead of being fatally hindered by fear? There are two 
fundamental truths that I've learned in my short life that allow me to choose growth over fear, at least most of the time. First, I know that life is fragile and fleeting, and thus that any future is inherently uncertain. But that on the flip side of that, right now is certain. Right now with you, this is real and this is certain. And that makes it infinitely more valuable than any future worry over any future uncertainty. And so when I get scared that everything bad in the world is going to happen, I try and remind myself that it is okay because I have this moment and it is good and it is certain. Because maybe that was all that Peter Pan ever was. Maybe it wasn't that the lost boys never grew up. Maybe it was just that they stopped wanting and worrying about growing up. The second fundamental truth, and by far the most important to me, is something that my grandfather said to me in the back of the car that day. I was asking in true Chelsea philosophical style, do you think you have done enough in your life. And before the accident ever happened, my grandfather said, yes, Turkey was a big part of that. <laughs> now, not the type of turkey that you eat. <laughs> my grandparents had lived in Turkey for 12 years, without going without knowing either the culture or the language particularly well. They went as missionaries, which, for them, was deeply aligned with their essence. This is the second fundamental truth, that when I die, I want to die saying, I have done enough. And the only way that you get there is by doing things that are from your soul. Other type of work will never do it. And sometimes that means taking risks. As Brene Brown explains about Roosevelt's quote, it is not what happens in the arena that counts, for that is uncertain. But the fact that you had the courage to get in the arena and try and fight for a life that really aligned with who you are. Outside of the dramatics of the accident, this took me 7,000 kilometers abroad to England. Now, the fear factor of going to school abroad, for me especially, was potentially off the charts. I have no idea before I went what it was like to live on my own, whether or not I would do well in a completely different academic environment. I didn't know if I would understand their accents. I didn't know if it would be accessible. I didn't even know what it was like to move because I have lived in the same house my entire life. And yet, I did it. And I was able to do it because I knew, deep down at least, that that was the choice that gave me the best chance of living and being inspired from a place that means so much to me. And I was right. It was there that I found professors that inspired me and challenged me to develop my own voice. It was there that I wrote a dissertation that I absolutely love about how people categorize their morals. It was, as I had always known, the arena that I had to step into. But just because I know something deep down does not mean that I am not superficially attacked by superficial fears, which my mind especially seems perpetually open to. I deal with these more superficial fears using a more superficial tactic. I delay fear. I deny that having found the courage to live from my soul today, that will require me to find more courage tomorrow. So, for example, when I applied to talk to you today, I denied that if I found the courage to put in my application, that that would mean that someday I would have to find the courage, much bigger courage, 
to talk in front of 400 people. And even now, I am denying that having found the courage to talk to you, that I will have to find the courage tomorrow to let them put this online. <laughs> this tactic allows me to chunkify fear, to break it into smaller pieces that minimize its power to hold me back. These are my tactics and my truths. I don't know if how I deal with fear is right, and I am certainly not trying to teach you anything, for that feels far too presumptuous at 22. But I hope that when fear tries to paralyze you, that you find a way to live from the place of whatever your equivalent is, of my place of love and peace. Thank you. Thank you.